he blesses and adds no sorrow to it. And so we will continue with it on Sunday. But at this point, um, we we'll just look at what we should be looking at tonight. We're not going to be running around too much. We'll keep ourselves at one place just to observe what the dimension of the Spirit is this month. And once it is made available this month, it's, uh, it becomes... <clears throat> it becomes then it becomes because once God's word is spoken it becomes active for life till the end of ages he said all things shall pass but the word of God will not pass so you can recap on any of the directions of the Spirit for a given month. But before we go any further, it's beautiful to acknowledge one another in the hands of God when we are gathered. Shaking of hands is beautiful. So, let's acknowledge one another in the most beautiful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. and promptings and all that which you do and then will become evident and obvious to yourself and all that who sees you that truly God does live in your heart the question is he's there and when you don't yield to his instructions his guidance his promptings he preventing you from doing what you should not be doing that's where you find yourself in that 
position where you begin to question whether God is there, whether He's seen you, and when people are wondering why you go to church. The challenge is you are not listening to His presence in you. Because He's there. But anyway, today we're going to look at some of the concepts of sowing. This is a month of sowing. And it's very important for us to actually lay bare some of the truths in sowing of seeds. We're not going to look at types of sowing or stuff. We're just going to look at what is said about sowing. So I say concepts of sowing. That is not exhaustive because we're just starting it. But that is not to say you can't go back to last month and say it's a month of prayer. Like you said, once the word of God is spoken, it becomes active. Even if it's written, it is like that for life, for generations to come. Because the scriptures have been written so many years ago, and they are still active, producing the same results in very diverse dimensions all across the world. And that's a part of the Word of God. So Pastor just actually mentioned that scripture, Psalm 126. Psalm 126. It's not too big as a, 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 um, a chapter, so we might as well read it all. So I'll take it from one. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamt. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. So you see, people know it when the Lord has done something great for you. They didn't say they themselves. Before even they said, the heathen, the unbelievers, the onlookers said, the Lord has been good to them. Let's read it again. Then was our mouth filled with laughter because of what the Lord has done for them. Okay? Now, and our tongues with singing, then said they among the heathen, not themselves, among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. Someone else is confirming their state. So people know when you have moved, they know when you are blessed. Is it that they will celebrate you or they will persecute you, making sure for you not to be aware of your promotion so you despise yourself? But this time, Glory to God, they actually confirm their state that the Lord has been good to them. But in not many cases that people will appreciate your progression. Not many cases. So sometimes persecution is not because you are wrong. <laughs> you should know where you... You see, this is why it's very important. The scripture says, lack of knowledge, my people perish. So if you are aware, knowledge brings awareness. If you are aware of your state, you are aware of where you are, you are aware of what you are doing... When someone questions you, there will not be any guilt in your soul because you have. Last week we have seen that we judge all things but no one judges us. And we come to the understanding that that means you analyze, you ponder over everything before you bring out. So by the time you bring it out, it is measured by God's standard that is in you, which is the word of God in you. So then there is no measure to which they can judge you. I said God. You see... Now, but anyway, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. Now they are saying it. The Lord, verse 3, the Lord has done great things for us. Wherefore, we are glad. When was the last time you've been glad for what the Lord has been good to you? Be, 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 you know, rejoice in the Lord. With all that is within you. Hallelujah. Then, Turn again, oh, uh, turn again our captivity, oh Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. It's a month of sowing. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Okay, so that means even when you sow in joy, your reaping will be exceptional. He said, when those that sow in tears, things are challenging, things are difficult, mm -hmm. the, the, even the seed itself, 
you are wondering, should I sow it or not? You are heavy about it, but you went ahead anyway because you believe the word of God. The only reason why you will be in tears about what is happening and still go forth to do something for the Lord is trust, like Pastor Chris said right now in the he said it's 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 the affirmation of the trust you have for the for the Lord, confidence that you have in the word of God. He said, Those that sow in tear, he didn't say they will reap in tear because their state will not be the same. Things will change. That's what he's trying to say. It's a month of sowing. He touched on so many different kinds of givings and so on. He said, they are all offering unto the Lord. But he said, when you sow a seed specific to something for a desired result, you are sowing. Then again, he went on to talk about when you are doing something on behalf of special seed, you are sowing for a change in the life of someone. So let's, let's look at this thing in a very broad measure. You might be there and say, I don't have a need. There's not, I, I, there's, I'm, everything is okay with me. What about someone else? Because we have not received Christ for ourselves alone, but for the people around us and for the nations. So if you think that everything is okay for you, challenge yourself to sow something in line with the change in someone else's life. Glory to God. Turn again our captivity, O oh Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Shall reap in joy. To me, effectively, whatever state you have sold, you will never be in that state again. There's a traumatic charge. There's a spiritual principle that when you sow, be it in tears, be it in joy, be it in hardship, you will definitely do what? Reap in joy. Meaning there's a, a, a bounty harvest. Meaning there is some change of what it was. Then he went on. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed. You are weeping, but bearing precious seed. Shall doubtlessly come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheep with him. You go forth with your seed, whether with heavy heart, whatever I said, weeping, bearing precious seed. You see, okay, now this is the thing. Is it when I said it's precious? Who is the measure of that preciousness? Preciousness. Me. <coughs> Pardon me. Who is it? Is it the onlooker? Because when you, 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 you who has moved, is moved by the word of God, by the presence of God in you, by the confidence in the word of God, what are you doing? He said, your faith in the act of God, your faith in the word of God, is what is prompting you to do all the offerings, the tithings, and what have you. So, faith is the matter. For which you are saying that, Father, this, special, this flower is special to me. But I'm laying it on your altar as a seed. What is that? It's faith. Isn't it? It's faith. So, if faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, and by the revelation of the Spirit, faith is the substance of things hoped for. By who? The subject who is hoping. The evidence of things not seen by who? The onlookers. Because before it came to life for them to say, oh, okay, what is he saying oh, is true. You have believed that you have it. You have hoped in the Lord that you have it. You are the bearer. So faith is individual. So here, who is the measure to that preciousness? He that goes forth and weeping, bearing precious seed. Who? Is it the man bearing this precious seed? Or the pastor, or the the brethren, or the persons who know who, who what his challenge is. You, the man bearing the seed, should be the only person who knows that this is my best. Because I don't, know, I, I'm not, I'm not with you. You know what you have, and you know what you're desiring. And in relation to that, you know that what I am about to lay on the altar of the Lord will move the Lord. So it's individual. 
The preciousness there is individual. When everybody came giving and Jesus Christ was there looking in the porch and the lady gave by the spirit. Knowing the state of the lady said she has given the best. In comparison with all the rich men who came to put bundles of money in there. Because that was her best. He that goes forth and weeping. So actually, when you go forth rejoicing, yours should be a bumper of a harvest. Because the guy is weeping, but he has gone to sow anyway. And you are you, you are burying your precious seed and you will rejoice and say, Father, I am confident. I believe in you. I know, but once I lay this on your altar, oh man, glory to God. Because you, 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 you are garnishing the concept of what you are about to do. And so I believe that the receiving itself should be, it, it, it just puts you in that state. Glory to God. Very precious seed shall doubtlessly, doubtlessly. He said, No doubt, you will surely. He did this one, he didn't say may. He said, Shall doubtlessly come again with rejoicing. If we should all be conscious of our seeds, what we call seed, either being a seed for a desired result or seed, like Pastor said, a special seed towards somebody's change or something for someone if only we would take account of when we have done that and where we are we will actually recognize that things have changed and what it means by coming back rejoicing is you coming now to testify because we saw you when you were giving and actually probably you don't pull you put your your your, your envelope we don't even know what it is that is there and then you come by rejoicing then we will then do Flashback, you say, Oh, that was the seed she sowed that day. He sowed that day. Things like that. Shall doubtlessly, doubtlessly come again with rejoicing, bearing his or her sheep with him. Bearing your harvest, bearing your desired result. Amen. Or coming with a testimony of a sister's life or a brother's life that I have shown the seed for a change in this person's life because he's struggling, he's challenging, he's addictive, he's this, but it has changed. Doubtlessly, there should be a change. So long as you are connected to it, knowing what you're doing, glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Doubtlessly. So when you sow, you will reap. When you sow, you will reap. Yes. They weep as they go to plant their seed. Mm. But they sing as they return with the harvest. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's how it should be. Ooh, glory. You might you might feel, ah, hey, this is my last or something. You're heavy about it. It's just like when Jesus told the disciples, then not his disciples, he said they should cast the net again. They have told all night, they are tired. But he said that's your word. So, Father, sometimes be honest, we see how David communicates with God. He said, give him your ears. He questions God. He asks God questions. So you, you be honest with God and say, Father, this is my last. In myself, I won't do it. By your word said I should trust you with it. Therefore, I'm going for That's what it means by you are weeping. You, you have made your, your concern known to God that in myself I won't do this. But I'm going to do it because your word says so. I'm doing it. That's what it is. Disciples in ourselves, by what we know as fishermen, we will not cast the net anymore. We will not. But at your word, we will do it. So in myself, Father, this hundred pound is all I'm looking forward to for the next six months. But your word, I'm going to put your word says that he that bursts see going forth with heavy heart, weeping, shall doubtlessly come back with rejoicing, giving glory to the Father. Therefore, Father, I'm trusting you with this. Take it. Let him know that you are acting on his word. Not at the state of your imagination. But this is it. Father, your word says so. In myself, I won't do it. Be honest with God. 
even if you don't say, he knows it anyway. But he, <laughs> even if you don't say, he knows it. But God wants us to link our heart, our mind with our mouth. Someone said, but he knows my mind anyway. David knows God knows his mind, but he spoke them off. What? Because he knows when he speak them, they become active. They are not thoughts anymore. So doubtlessly. So you tell you tell God, you say, this is it. Doubtlessly, okay, now, Father, that's it. At your word, I'm putting it before you. This is a seed for a desired result. This is what I want, Father. Nothing more, nothing less. But your word says that you're able to do above, beyond all that which I ask or desire. So, Father, if more, good, but not less. Amen. That's it. That's it. Glory to God. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 6. In the morning sow thy seed, and in the evening withhold not thine heart, for thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike good. Truly, the light is sweet, and the pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Yes. Amen. Now. <laughs> right, let's go back up. Okay? Because I've actually decided we're going to read it, all of it. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> let's take it from the top and then we'll come to that point. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. If casting your bread on the waters, mm -hmm. you will find it. Mm -hmm. How much casting it into the Lord? Mm -hmm. You are casting your last into the Lord. You, you, you are putting it into the Lord. But the word used here, he said, cast it onto the waters. Mm -hmm. The waters are big and large and open. Mm -hmm. It crosses, it, it is actually encompassed the whole world. Mm -hmm. But he's telling you, you will find it again. No. How possible is that? But in Christ there is a surety. In Christ is everything made. So there is no way that you will cast into the Lord and not find it. In many days or in a few days, you sure will find it. Let's continue. Verse 2. Give a portion to seven and also to eight. For thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. He's just trying to say, be sensible to measure Putting things where they should be. Alright? Putting things where they should be. Because of the uncertainty of the earth. And the, the scripture actually told us that what? We should, we should uh, not um, store our treasures in earthly vessels where moths and coal can eat it up. But we should store it in the treasure of God. Into heaven. Which is showing it into the things of God. That's the only one that has value. Everything you store in the banks here, you will leave them. All right, someone sent something around and said there was a rich man who died. I know people have been writing things from their minds. Said the rich man died, and then he asked his people that uh, when he dies, they should make the coffin. His hands hands should be hanging outside, and uh, through the coffin, his hands should be hanging outside whilst he's in the coffin, and then whilst he's on the way to the um, the, the the cemetery, they should be spreading gold and stuff and stuff. <laughs> on the way. So his counselor is asking why. He said so people will know that he has not taken anything with him. They can see his hands that he has taken nothing with him. 
that those things that he has accrued has no value to where he's going. So it's true. No one has brought anything and no one will take anything anyway. So the choice is ours what we want to do. Whether to fully believe in this Lord of ours or not to. Because somebody says, I'm doing it small, small. There's no small, small. You're either you are in it or you're out. There is no middle ground. You are either negative or positive. And even in science, it's one or one. Negative or positive. Good or bad. Holy Spirit, the devil spirit. That's how it is. So that was his concept. So they should make his hands hang. So that everybody will see him as a rich man. He's going away with nothing. So the choice is ours. Let's carry on. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if the tree fall towards the south or towards the north, in a place where the tree fell, there it shall be. Now, he that observes the wind shall not sow. Let's stop there for a minute. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 11, I've, I've, I'm reading it from verse 1. Now I'm on verse, uh, verse, uh, verse 4. He that observed the wind shall not sow. And he that regarded the clouds shall not reap. Now, he that observes the wind shall not sow. What is the wind? The wind is a contrary situation. No one wants the wind all over the place messing things up. It's all ineffectively. If you're looking at your situation, if you are looking at the challenges around you, you will not sow. If you want it all to be cool and calm, before you go to the farm, you're never going to go. Because there will be some small wind anyway. The, the leaves will be shaking somehow, but you still have to go and sow. You see, so in, 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 our, in, our natu- in our life as Christians, as children of God, he's saying that all these mirage, I call them mirage because they, are not, they don't exist. When you look at them, you will not sow. You will not obey the instruction of God. You will not do the word of God because the word of God is for doing. So if you're looking at the fact that, ah, I have not built that five-bedroom five mansion yet, okay, uh, this is that, this is that, hey, and I have 100 pounds, I should have been saving it towards that. Eh? You are making calculations with God all over the place. No. When is everything is fine, I will sow. Then you are not ready to sow because what is a seed? It's something that you 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 cannot complete your own desires with. Because hundred pounds will not build a five bedroom mansion for you. So a seed is sown to multiply. Because when you put a corn in the ground, it comes out and gives you multitude of it on the cob. That's the concept. So the five pound. The 10 pound, the 100 pound, the 1000 pound will not necessarily buy the Lamborghini. Mm. But you can sow it for a bumper harvest. Mm. So you can. So if you will now sizing up, measuring, taking accounts, that's the wind. Mm. They are contrary situations to the instruction of the Lord. He says what? Let's, let's read it again. <laughs> he that observes the wind shall not sow. A child of God that is observing his or her situation will not sow. Be it a special seed or a seed for a desired result, that child of God will not sow. It's as simple as that. He that observed the wind shall not sow. And he that regarded the clouds shall not reap. Okay, this is it. There are some people who also sow and not, not really harvest. That now, he said, he that observed the cloud will not reap. The harvest is there, but it's not reaping. You know, hey, it's cloudy today, I can't go to the farm. It's this, it's that, it's that. It's that child of God who says, yeah, I've done it. Whatever, I'm waiting. When it happened, it happened. Whenever the cloud settles, I will go. When it happened, it happened. No, you don't so see as a child of God and go and sit there and say, when it happened. No, you pray. You, you, you stay in communication with God. You, remember, you remind God of what you have done in accordance with his word. You bring, he said, bring it to my remembrance. Is that what he said? 
He said, bring it to my remembrance. It's not because he's forgetful. Just to cause you yourself to think in line with him. So he can speak to you concerning that matter. So he can cause you to make decisions for the harvest. Many children, there are many Christians that you go to say, I've been sowing all my life, nothing has happened. Because they are not, they are not conscious of their sowing. Natural farmers, when they sow, they do all sorts of things because they have confidence that the seed will yield. They do all they can to protect the seed. Scarecrows, they go early in the morning to chase the bears away. They, they put scarecrows in the farm to make sure bears feel like people are there. They don't come and dig out the seeds because they have confidence the seed will definitely produce a result. That's why they are doing all within their capacity too. But as a child of God, what are you doing to protect that seed? You have finished sowing seed, you go forth and you are speaking all over the place anyhow. And you know in our kingdom, words matter. The words you speak, they matter. So you have used your words as the best to come and remove your own seed. And you think God did not act for you. And you think he has not acted for you. When you have used your own mouth, because he has given us, he has given us power. He, we have been given dominion on this earth. And he said, well, so whatsoever you have bind on this earth shall be born in heaven. You lose it, it's lost in heaven. So you sow your seed, now you go confessing things are hard. It will be hard, irrespective of your seed. Because you are binding yourself. You say the things are hard, they'll be hard. It'll be harder than before. And then you turn around and say, I've been sowing seed all this my life, nothing is happening. It's you. It's you. That farmer is doing all he can to protect because he has confidence in the seed. Go, I live by the countryside. Go and see what sort of thing. Some of them even work in the night. It's here I know that farmers work in the night. They have strong, powerful lights on their tractors and they're harvesting in the night. Because some of the fruits, they are perishable. There are certain things they have to harvest them. They don't have to let them see rains and stuff. They do all sort of things because of the confidence they have in it. How much confidence do you have in your seed you are sowing? You're eating the words you are speaking, they are seeds. So when you sow a, a, a material seed or monetary seed unto the Lord, you can flourish it with your, 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 your words as seed. Nourish it. Speaking positive about it. You don't have, you see, you, you're looking at the cloud, therefore you're there. So you want to blame God that he didn't do anything for you. This is why your seed didn't work. No, you are the one. You are the one. When you speak to everybody, uh, things are hard. I'm managing. You will manage all your life. You will manage. You manage. You can bring the whole world and come and put it at the altar and go and be speaking contrary and see. Mm. Nothing will happen. Because you are the author, you, you have power. He's, he has given us power. In Christ, He has given us power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And you have authority. That authority, you are using it negatively. In the Proverbs, what did He say? Death and life are in the power of the time. Someone asked Pastor Chris question last time. How do I measure my spiritual growth? He said your words, the way you speak, is the measure to your spiritual growth. As simple as that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's get back on track. This is just the starting of our seeds. Seed sowing. Because we should not be in that state of trying to blame God for what has not happened or has happened. He has been God since the, the time immemorial. Before the foundation of the earth, he has been there. And he's telling you when you do this, this, this is what you see. If you don't see, don't question. You be acting yourself. What I've done wrong. That's the beginning for change. That's the beginning for solution. Acknowledging your shortfall is the beginning for solution and change. But if you are still there trying to bluff your way, uh, trying to make it look like this Christian work is not real, it, it's people trying to make it no. It is real. Glory to God. He that observes the wind shall not sow. I pray God we don't observe the wind. And he that regarded the clouds shall not reap. Five. As thou knowest not what is the way, what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow. In the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the words of God who maketh all. 
Do you know how the bones are formed in the womb of a woman who is pregnant? Uh -huh. So why are you questioning the fact that if I sow this seed, will it happen? Am I not wasting my time sowing unto the Lord? Then you should say I'm wasting my time actually getting pregnant because you don't know how bones are going to be formed, how the eyes are going to pop out, how the ears to be formed. Therefore, I'm wasting my time getting pregnant. But you believe that you come out with a child. So even whilst you're tired, you carry on. You didn't go to throw the child away. You carry on. You, ca you, you protected the seed in you. You act much more than before. I've seen it. <laughs> All because you want the child to grow well. You, you're protecting the seed. That's what we should do when we sow seed. Be it monetary or worse seeds. We should protect it. But making sure we don't speak contrary. We don't do things contrary to the seed. Before, before you attach, you say, hey, hey, I'm pregnant. Hey, hey, hey. You, you are careful. Your walking has changed. All because you want to protect that seed in there. What do you do to protect your seeds that you have sown unto the Lord? What have you done to? How much have you done to show that you have confidence in this seed? You say, I've sown, I've done it now. Your, 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 your poster alone even says you are not having confidence in it. Whatever. I've done it. They say, I should sow. You see, when you ask people, oh, hey, he told me to, meaning you have not agreed to. Until you come to that point that I have decided to sow. It has become your decision. And they told me to that, show me to I sow. Uh, after now, nothing happened. It's not you. They told me to. Uh, me, this Christian thing, whatever. Whatever. Hey, it will be whatever now. It will be whatever. Whatever is whatever. Once it's whatever, it's whatever. It's whatever. He said what? As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with the child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all things. So don't say, how is he going to multiply it? How am I going crying with my seed and would then be coming back rejoicing? No, he said, don't worry about that. In as much as you don't know how the bones and the eyes and all those that takes place for a child to come forth from a woman, just leave the seed as though it's a, a, a seed in the woman's womb. And then, do all you can to protect it. Looking forward to it. A pregnant woman looks forward to the ninth month. Yeah. What are you looking forward to after you have sown? You can to give God time. You want to give him time, give him time. It's a special seed you're sowing. It's a, a seed you are sowing for a desired result. Have a conversation with him. David have a conversation with her father. He have a chat with him about the matter. And he asks. Glory to God. Then we will, we will put it at six. I won't go any further and then we'll read something else. Then six. In the morning, sow thy seed. And in the evening, with the whole not thy hand. He said, at every opportunity to sow, sow. Someone say, I've sown the other time. Should I be sowing today again? And last Sunday I sowed. They said, special giving. They said this. And today, today I asked him. He said, in the morning, sow thy seed. And in the evening, withhold not thine hand. For thou knowest not whether shall prosper. Whether the one in the morning or the one you're about to do now. Remember, he has questioned you that you don't know how the bones are formed in the womb of a woman. So stop questioning, how is this going to happen? You just be obedient to the word of God. Do the word of God and continue sowing. The more you sow, the more you harvest. Withhold not thine hand, for thou knowest not whether shall prosper, either this or that, or whether they both shall be alike killed. Glory to God. Learn to protect your seed. Learn to remember your seed and bring the Lord into remembrance that, Father, I have not forgotten this seed I sow. Father, I have not forgotten this seed I have sown. For this desired result, that particular seed I sowed that day, I sowed it because I want this. Father, I am still looking forward and I'm trusting that this will happen. Therefore, Father, I'm bringing you to remembrance. I sowed that seed on the 25th of April, 1952, 1600. That should, you see, that even a 
able to say the time which you saw it, that alone tells you that you are conscious of it. You want something from it. How many of us can tell the last thing we saw, the date we sold it, even the time that we sold it? No. So what is the expectancy? Are we really expectant of this thing? Because of how important the birth date is, this is why when you give birth, they'll tell you on this day and this time. Right? And then you sow a seed. So it's precious to you, but you don't even know the, the date on which you sowed it. Yeah, it's okay to know. Father, on the 20, God, you who's a God doesn't know dates. He knows dates. Except it's allowed of God, no man can do anything. So if it's not in God's calendar for us to have dates, we wouldn't have had dates. So he knows dates. Father, on the 16th April 2015, I sowed a thousand pound seed because I was expecting to have this. I'm bringing it into remembrance. I'm still looking forward to because my seed is still in the ground. And I've been guiding it. But Father, last time I said something contrary. Father, forgive me. I withdraw that word. You are still having conversation with him. Taking account that Father, I think I've said something contrary to what I have done. Therefore, I withdraw it in Jesus' name. And then you're still guiding it. Protecting it. To see it come to pass. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glorious things are spoken of us. Glorious things are spoken of us. Um, let's look at something. What time we go? We got some few minutes. We should be done in a minute. Hey guy or Haggai, which one? What do you say? Hey guy, Haggai. Okay, Haggai. We can go for Haggai. No problem. It's all fine. Chapter one, verse six. I wish that we read the whole thing, because certain things were said there. Okay, let's see if we can have some few minutes. Then we can continue the rest next week. Now, okay, I won't go back too far top. Well, let's take it from two. Thou speaketh the Lord of hosts. Thou speak, speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, These people say the time is not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. Okay? They are saying, see, many times they say it's not yet time. But the scripture didn't say that. Yes, um, we, uh, you, you are like a tree planted by the rivers of water that you bring for food. You don't know droughts. There's no... He said, seed time and harvest time shall never cease. So whether there's seed or harvest is dependent on the person. And this is why no one that is saying that he that looks at the wind shall not sow. So the same way he that looks at the weather conditions will not sow. Ah, it's dry season now. Why should I be sowing? But he said, so long as there is, he said, the, the sun and the day and the night, seed time and harvest time shall not cease. So why are you not saying because it's summer? So we cannot sow. You are limiting yourself. Why are you not saying it's winter? I cannot sow. The man said, seed time and harvest time shall not cease. Is that not, you see, because you have already said, is that not what has moved science unconsciously to begin to create avenue, means by which they even produce fruits all year round? Is that not fulfilling what the scripture says? See, time and harvest times are not end. Before then, it was not like that. But because it has already been spoken, the spirit is still there. And whoever is diligent in those codes, remember we said what? God is not trying to do anything new. He has set every code and laws in motion. Whoever is diligent, whether a child of God or not a child of God, will yield to, will produce that result. And somebody who is learned, studying in that line, has found that though we can be producing fruit all year long. It's already in the scripture. It's not new. The scripture says there's nothing new under the sun. So we should not be amazed and surprised at the things. If you know the scriptures, you will not be amazed at things. It's already in the scriptures. 
We have found out that, yes, the first plastic surgery was done by God himself. He opened it. He, he didn't say that he controlled. He opened Adam's side and took a bone to create Eve. That was the first of his kind. They did not say that. He said he put him to a deep sleep. What is that? What did they do in the hospitals to you when you go there? They want to operate on you. God is the first to do everything. Come on now. Come on now. He's the first to do everything. Except he has been done before, they can't do it. Mm. Except he's allowed of the Lord, you can't do it. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> See, they can say, oh, they want to say that I have found my consolation in the word of God to know that he has done it before. There's nothing new under the sun he said, and I believe. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. But let's take it from two. That speaker the Lord of hosts, saying, these people say, the time is not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. Okay, leave it. We'll come back in a way. Then, then came the word of the Lord to Haggai, the prophet, saying, It is time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses. And this house lay wasted. It's just like when people say that, uh, Yeah, when everything is fine, I will do this for the Lord. Whilst they were already enjoying their houses, they are saying it's not yet time for them to build for the Lord. The same thing. You have, you said it's not yet. When, 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 when I have thousand pounds, I'll give God hundred. But you have fifty and you are spending it, you cannot part away five. That's what he's saying. He said what? You guys are saying it's not yet time to build my house, my house. But you are living in your sealed houses. You are enjoying them. You have built houses for yourself. But it's not yet time to build mine. Eh? Okay? That's what we do. We put time on when to do things on God. Every, every opportunity is a time to trust the Lord. Believe in Him. Having confidence like Pastor Chris was saying. Every act in the world is your declaration. Sacred declaration that Father, I have confidence in your word. Let's carry on. Let's carry on. <laughs> he said he came down. He, you see? He came down. He said the, 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 that's making the Lord of hosts. Saying, so these people say, <laughs> you should read it from the top. The time is not come. The time that the lost house should be built is not come. Hey, but you have built yours. Yours is come. Who is first? God or you? No, no, who is first? Okay, so you set yourself first and he second. How balanced is that equation there? He's first. Before the earth, he was there. Before the foundation of the earth, he was there. But you have laid foundation for your houses. You are building, you finish it, you are dwelling in it, and you are still procrastinating his. He said, it's not yet time. When you should be making a move to sow so that he can move you, he said, Father, it's not yet time. I, I want to I want to really make it big. So you, you leave me. When I, you're using your own strength. Glory to God. Let's carry on. Let's carry on. Then came the word of the Lord to Hagar, the prophet, saying, Is it? Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lay waste? Now therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have sown much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none worn. And he that earned wages, earned wages to put it into a bag with holes. We will not draw there too much. When you said the Lord second in your matters, he said what? You have been toiling, struggling, doing all things, but it's not getting enough. It's, 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 it, it, you, you, you think the more you put your energy and everything in it, the output should be excellent. But he's saying that you have so much. Not into him, you have sown into the things you believe and trusted. But he said, You have sown much and bring little. But we remember that we said, He that goes for sowing shall doubtless he come back with what? And he said, He that sows sparingly shall reap sparingly, and he shall sow bountifully shall reap bountifully in the Lord. But here's the case, he's saying that. What's the irony here? What, what, what is this saying here? 
They sow much. They sow a lot. But they reap a little. Because they are not sowing with the Lord in it. It's not sown unto the Lord. Glory to God. May we learn to sow into the Lord. Amen. We will continue on Sunday. Don't be the one that you are using all your energy to do everything possible. And it's like you're wondering, what is going on? The more I do, it's not happening. <laughs> no, we have just seen it. Haggai, chapter 1, verse 6. You put in all that kind, but you're seeing a little. No. Glory to God. It's seed time. And when you, it's seed time, that means it's a harvest time. If the Lord has no purpose in his heart to cause us to have a bumper by harvest, he will not be giving us a word to say it's the amount of seed sowing. Because it's a amount of harvesting. Hallelujah. Learn to be conscious of your seeds and harvest them. Reap your harvest accordingly. Yes, Lord. For he is a Lord. He's faithful to his word. Mm. Glory to God. Mm. Shall we speak in the spirit?